Like many people, I was very excited for the first Destiny game. It was like, oh, these are the guys that made the Halo series, and they were really fun, lots of awesome action, great music, fun story, big action, good stuff there. Then when I got my hands on the first Destiny, I was disappointed just like almost everyone else. It was lacking in so many areas, but thankfully, as Bungie kept releasing expansions, I felt like the game kept getting a bit better. I decided to jump back in after the Taken King had gone on sale, and I was like, all right, I'm hearing a lot of positive, positive buzz about it. Let me give it another shot, and I really enjoyed it. So let's see how Destiny 2 now stacks up to Destiny 1. So let's get into it. Destiny 1 was missing a certain thing. You know, that thing that you see in a lot of games. It helps provide purpose to the player's actions in the game. You know, the, the thing with the stuff, plot, characters, and story. So Destiny 2 has those and builds upon what was improved from the Taken King expansion. Here we get a narrative that is familiar, cliched, fairly easy to follow, and most of all, enjoyable. Base game Destiny 1 had a story but it was poorly told to us. It was a game where they just kept introducing different races to the characters, and you were like, huh? Because the characters in the game acted like they knew everything, but we're new, we're the players, we are new to this world, and it doesn't feel like they gave us a chance to get acclimated to it. It was more like, oh, hey, here you go, throw you in the pool, learn how to swim. Oh, you can't swim, sorry. So with the game introducing many different races, there was a lot of instances of the game being like, oh, hey, They'd talk about the Fallen, and you were like, what's a Fallen? Is it some old guy who couldn't get back up? What's a Hive? Is it a Beehive? Like, what's the origin of these things? Why are we fighting them? Do they pay union dues? Essentially, the plot of Destiny 1 was kind of like, well, you know when people try to have small talk and they tell a story that they find really funny? But it's one of those stories that you needed to be there, the one receiving the story. You needed to actually be there to see the event and be like, oh yeah, I remember that, that's hilarious. Well, if someone's telling it to you secondhand, it just doesn't work, so it's not as funny. It's more like, oh, you remember that? No, I, I, I wasn't there. Oh, it was hilarious, that's great. Can you shut up and let's move on? Now here with Destiny 2, what I like is we have a clear villain and we know we must stop him. I like this. I understand that many people working at Bungie, they've changed over the years. They've had people leave the company, they've had new talent come in, but one thing that I've always enjoyed about Bungie as a company is that they're able to take simple stories. I mean, if you just look at the Halo series, they take simple stories and tell them on a grand scale. And I do feel like this kind of follows suit to those Halo games. It was nice to see the Vanguard actually be characters in this game. Like they're in the intro mission, like you see them actually doing things like kicking ass, which is really cool. And in the last mission, so they're actually participating with you instead of being like, hey, Guardian, go do that stuff for us, okay? And Cade is still the best character in this game. He gets some of the best writing, and it also helps too that Nathan Fillion is voicing him. I feel like he was allowed to riff in many instances of this game because of how the dialogue does feel so natural from him, which is really good because he provides some levity in this game to when it starts getting a little bit dark and a little bit heavy, you know, you get Cade come in and he'll make you laugh. Look, I know you're new here, so let me catch you up. Everything you love about Earth is gone. Your skinny, no-foam vanilla latte? Gone. Binge watching? Gone. Cards, love songs, the Grand Canyon? Ruined! Okay, that didn't change much. But say goodbye to surprise parties. Ketchup and mustard, late night texts, Taco Tuesdays, and if that wasn't enough, puppies. Or... Not the puppies. I know, right? Who does that? So the main bad guy, Gary, comes and wrecks your home, which results in the player losing their light, so they can't use their superpowers anymore. And then the game immediately gives the light back to the player, because raisins. I feel like having an element of loss in the game from a gameplay standpoint would have been worked and it could have been done in a different way. Maybe taking away the light and then immediately giving it back I just feel like by doing it that way, it just doesn't have the same impact. It's like, oh, you lost something and then we just gave it back to you. 
I feel like if they're gonna take something away, they should let you sit with it a bit. You know, kind of contemplate it a little bit. Let that sit, sink in a little bit and then give it back to you or maybe give it back to you in a better manner. I've discussed that in another video where I talked about another game that I felt like did that element of loss and then return of the power pretty well. Now having said that, that I would like Bungie to do something different with this aspect that they, instead of what they did in the game, I really don't know what they would do. It's more so a question I pose. So if you think of something that you're like, oh, this is a better idea for how we take away the light and then give the light back to the player, let me know in the comments. The main story consists of missions fighting Gary's minions and uniting your allies. The last few missions get pretty epic, including an awesome tank level. Overall, the story mode was solid with lots of cutscenes and enjoyable missions. This was a nice improvement from base game Destiny. Considering how fun the story mode was, it's odd that you can't select specific story missions to return back to and play them as you want. Yeah, you can replay story missions through the meditations in the hub area, but they're only missions that Bungie allows you to select on that day. I want to be able to run through the whole campaign again with my same character at a higher difficulty level. I really hope this gets patched especially considering they did a really good job, I think, with the story in this. So in Destiny 2, we have these adventure missions that are scattered throughout the different planets. What I like with these is they basically act as these one-off side missions, but they have some narrative context to them. So for the most part, most of these missions are rather enjoyable, and I do like the narrative bits that you get while playing them. They're fun, and you can oddly repeat those, but you can't repeat the story missions. So the open areas of the planets, they're better than they were in the previous game and they actually have some exploration to them. Instead of going to the planets and basically doing a series of bookkeeping and checklists, instead of being able to actually enjoy the environment that's made here. And part of this is because these environments are full of these little mini dungeons called dark sectors, which basically you find them throughout the environment and you go up to him, you fight a boss, you get some uh, goods and then you leave and you go to the next one. You keep traveling throughout the environment. I like this. It allowed me to kind of just slowly go through the environments. I was able to enjoy it more. I'm like, ooh, there's a dark sector. I'm gonna head over that way. Oh, while I go that way, I might run into a public event and public events are back. What's exciting about the public events is they happen more frequently and they are a lot of fun. What I like is they essentially create this objective that's on the map and anyone who's around you can participate in this event so you can help each other out. Along with that exploration, this game does something so amazing that I didn't think they'd be able to do. You know what they did? They added a map. Yes, while you are on the planets, you can now open up a map and see where the hell you are. Because in the last games, it was just like, no, maps, that's not the way of the future. Wandering around's the way of the future. It was just annoying. It's nice that it's here. I do like that because it's like, oh, I don't know where I am or I don't know where this is or I want to go to that area. Now you can. Now you know where you are, which is great. Another thing that's really cool about this is that they also add the ability to climb. You know, Destiny finally went into the modern age of first-person shooters where you can finally now extend your arm, grab a ledge, and pull yourself up. It's quite handy. Also too, after you beat the main story mission, these individual quest lines open up on each of the planets. And what's nice is they kind of have their own arcs to them. And they act as these like mini campaigns where you're stopping a threat and then after that you get another quest to then be able to get these exotic weapons. I think these are really cool. I'd also like an option to be able to replay them because just like with many of the missions in the game, the story missions, the adventures, they're really good and I want to see more of it. Most of the missions can be played in co-op. You have the uh, co-op strikes too, which those are exclusive just co-op only missions. Along with that, you can then play multiplayer. Both of them are fun options for players, but the one thing that's really weird about how Bungie does this mode in this, these modes in this game is that you can't individually select which strikes you want to do. You have to select a strike playlist. Same thing goes for multiplayer. It's like, oh, I only want to play control. No, you have to select a multiplayer playlist. For me, I would just prefer that maybe they have different sets of playlists or different mode selections like in every other game that offers multiplayer. I don't know why they did it this way, but that's just one thing that I'd like to see. Lastly, the music is grand and epic, with the soundtrack having just a great variety in the different tunes that you hear throughout the game. What I like about this here is that usually we get a really good soundtrack from Bungie 
A lot of that is because Marty O'Donnell is a great composer and great music. He's not in this one, he doesn't compose the music for this one, but the music that they choose to go with for this, the different styles I feel like really definitely fit. It doesn't, your ears won't get bored. You know, you have some stuff that kind of sounds like a little bit more electronic. Then you have some other stuff that happens in here that sounds something straight out of Tolkien. These kinds of mu music, these kind of music scores in the game really do fit within the space magic sci-fi-ish universe of Destiny. And they're great, they're really good stuff here. All right, after I just spent the last 10 minutes brown-nosing Bungie over Destiny 2, let's talk about some areas that they could improve upon. First, as I mentioned before, I'd really like the ability to select story missions that I want to play when I want to play them, not, oh, the game says that you can only play these three today, but I don't want to play those three. I want to play the tank level again. Well, you can't play the tank level again. Let me pick my own campaign missions. Why? Because you actually made a good campaign. Guess what? I want to play it again because it was fun. I mean, it's not like this is the most revolutionary thing I have ever seen in the video game medium for it transcends entertainment. Ha, ha, ha. No, it's not anything like that, but it is really well done, a lot of fun, so just patch it and let me pick my own campaign missions that I want to do. Okay? Good? Alright, awesome. Now, with this story, a character was killed off in the story mode, and I felt like this was extremely poorly done, or I just didn't realize the character died and I zoned out for that, but either way, I feel like this part just wasn't that well done, regardless of if I missed anything. It's just like, the character just like falls on the ground, and just dies. That's it. Like, 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 that's it. There's nothing more. I didn't even realize they died until later on, after you have beaten the game, you go to a certain area in one of the hub worlds, you click investigate, and they're like, oh yes, this character died, and it'll be sad. I'm like, what? what? He, he died? Ferdinand died? What? Also, what happened to the factions from the first game? I understand they're coming back in some capacity, but I feel like incorporating the factions in a story way, in a narrative way, would have really, I don't know, it just really would have fit with the situation. Gary comes in trying to wipe everyone out on the tower, taking out the last city of humanity, and the factions are just like, yeah, we're preparing for something like this. Oh, they're here? Yeah, we're not ready. Bye. Yeah, we're, we just can't help. It just seems weird. It's just like, did they all leave? In some instances, the AI just seems a little bit dumber than what they were in the first game. There's just instances where these uh, the enemies will just be standing there and you're just kind of looking at them and they don't react or anything. You can get a couple shots into them and so they start being like, whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, I'm almost gonna die. So I just thought that was more weird than anything. Bungie does need to improve on how players select their multiplayer modes. I mentioned this a bit before. Just let me choose a specific mode that I want to play. So if I want to play control, let me play control. Don't force me to use a playlist and maybe I'll get control. And if you don't want to have particular level, like modes for people to select, then give us a wide variety of playlists, something to make us be able to get to what modes we want to get to. Also, bring back the larger modes that they had in the first Destiny. I really enjoyed them. Why? Because they had vehicles in this. I like the vehicles in the game. I like shooting people with the vehicles. Bring back that. Also, this is more of a comment than anything else, but overall, I do wish that Bungie had not used the Cabal in the first game. They were not really featured much in any of the expansions either, or in much of the first game. So I just feel like it would have been great if we saw the Cabal for the first time in Destiny 2. I do think Destiny 2 could have taken the opportunity to incorporate more new enemies and variations into the game. There are a few, but I do wish there were a bit more. The same goes for the vehicles. I want more vehicles to drive. This was always one of the best parts about going into a new Halo game. They'd add new vehicles, they'd add new guns, they'd add new enemies, and I always really enjoyed that. It's like, oh, every game I would always find a new favorite. And here, yeah, they did add the tank, and I do like that, but add a couple more, add a helicopter. You know, we need something, some type of flying vehicles. Let's get into that. Also, will my avatar ever talk again? Like, in the base game, he talked. In the expansions, he couldn't talk. In Destiny 2, he still doesn't talk. So, like, what happened to his voice? Did the darkness take it? Oh yeah, and the darkness is not mentioned in this game, which is pretty much fine by me because I prefer the simple narrative that they went for and if they want to explore the darkness thoroughly because basically they set this thing up 
and so far the darkness has been poorly executed because I don't know what the hell it is. I don't think anybody does. The writers don't. No one knows. It's, it's dark. Turn a lamp on. But it does feel like Destiny 2, in some ways, is kind of a bit of a soft reboot for the series. I mean, it, and some things are just a little confusing. From what I understand, the first Destiny game, the Traveler shows up on Earth. He's like, oh, hey guys. And he gives light to everybody. Everyone gets all these powers. And then when you start off the Taken King, they start telling you through exposition that the Traveler had died. And I'm like, wait, when did the Traveler die? And then you start up Destiny 2 and it's like, oh, we have to save the Traveler. So we have to save the Traveler. The Traveler is then not dead. So what's going on? The Traveler goes from being alive to dead to alive again. Is it going to go back to being dead and then alive again? Like, make up your mind. What is going on? And for something called the Traveler, it doesn't travel much. One thing I would like that they incorporate in the game that they did not have in the first game is trading. I just feel like that kind of fits with all the whole loots and things and all that stuff. You know, you got a new friend uh, joining up, just got the game. He's like, oh my god, I got no guns. You can kind of give him a good gun, give him a little bit of a head start. I don't know, I just feel like trading in some way, shape, or form should be involved here. I know I'll probably be yelled in the comments being like, no, there's no trading in the Destiny lore, for they cannot include it in the game. And if anyone points the lore for any of this bullshit or anything like that, I'm just gonna go back to the Traveler was alive, the Traveler is dead, and then Traveler's alive again. So yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. This game also has some really cool shaders. You can like change your armor colors and your weapon colors and your ship color. You can just change all the colors all the time. But the problem with this is, is now it's a consumable item. So it goes away and it only comes in groups of three. So you're not gonna be able to shade your whole self. You're just gonna kind of look like a weird looking pinata. The problem is here is that you can buy these shaders and yeah, you can earn them in game. But part of my thing is, I don't want to use them because they're so hard to come by with some of the cooler ones until I have the finalized armor set that I have. And even then, my brain goes here. It's like, oh, you get what you want now. You can change the set. But then once you know the next expansion comes out, or the one after that, the light levels will increase. So the armor sets that you have now potentially will not be the best forever. So I'm like, oh, well, then I'll never use these shaders. I understand people really don't like these shaders because they are consumable items. I'm not too crazy about it. I wish they went a different route with this. I don't think this is the best way to do it. I understand microtransactions and money, but I don't think it's so consumer friendly by going this way. Lastly, one of the hub areas in the game, basically the first hub area that you're in, the farm, after you beat the story mode, there's really no reason to return to the farm. So it, I, I don't know why they did this. I mean, I don't want them to have a crazy amount of hubs like they had in Destiny 1 because it just got annoying because it was like, oh, go to this hub and get these bounties and then go to that hub and get those bounties and then go to this hub because like, you know, it's just got the purdy colors. Here it's like, no, give me one hub and then just keep building on top of it. But the thing that sucks here is that the farm had a great soundtrack to it. I really loved the soundtrack at the farm, the first hub area. And it's a shame that there's really no reason to return back to that area. I would have been fine if that was the hub area for the whole game instead of the second hub that you get after beating the story mode. So overall, I really am enjoying my time with the game. I find that it's improved in many areas over the base game and it still has some areas to still improve upon. I do hope that we don't get a Destiny 3 in the next few years unless we have a big console jump. You know, not like the half jump with the Pro or the One X or whatever. You know, I just hope that they kind of stick with Destiny 2 for the rest of this console run. If they want to release expansions or anything like that, that's fine. But don't give me another big full game kind of a thing. Just build off of this one, next gen, give me a new game. But yeah, I would say overall, if you're looking for something that has a bunch of content, better story content than the original and a lot of co-op, I would say that this is worth your time, along with some really good competitive multiplayer. Having said that, you know that they're going to release another version of this same Destiny that includes the base game for Destiny 2 and all the expansions or anything like that that's happened probably or will probably come out next fall or something like that. So I will say, if you have a large backlog, maybe wait for this game to be bundled in with an expansion or two because you know it'll be that much better by then with patches and have even more variety because of that DLC content. So it's just something to think about depending on where you are in your gamer life. So thank you very much for watching and enjoying my voice and videoness for the duration of this video. And if you want to see more videos, check out my channel and I'll see you next time.